Yo, what's up Vital MTV? This is Dylan Stuckey. We're trying out Fox's new electronic live valve system and we're gonna do some experiments and bring it to you live. All right, live valve testing. What does it do on smooth, fast climbs? So here we go. Every time you see the green light go on, the suspension is open for that amount of time. As, and if the light is off, it's locked out. The whole theory is that you hit a small square bump that trips the sensor. Before you feel it in the handlebar, it's already open. And then once you're past it, it's already closed again, especially in climbing scenarios. And then descending, you want it open longer so that if there's another bump in succession, it's open still. The next scenario we're gonna test live valve on is a smooth roller descent with a couple of small rocks in there. So same thing. When the green light goes on, we're descending now, so the green light will stay on longer. And uh, we'll see how long the valve is open and when it's closed. Is it weird having your suspension open and close on you all the time? Robots, man. Alright, Vital MTV viewers, just to give you an idea of how sensitive the threshold is on this bike, I'm just going to do a light little drop test here, and you'll see the light come on when the sensor's tripped. But then you push down on the suspension, and it holds. The first threshold is obviously going to be your softest threshold, yeah. but when you increase the setting here, when you go deep into setting 5, the threshold increases. So in your lightest setting, it's going to be mostly open, and then in your stiffest setting, it's going to be mostly closed. In the middle, it's going to be variable in between, so probably the most active. This is the uphill smash experiment, take 1. This is downhill smash experiment. Same rules apply. Smashy. Smashed potatoes. So when you're on all the rock slabs, it's mainly open for the whole technical descent, but climbing, you hit the bump, you get through it, push through it, and then it locks out again, and you can immediately get on the pedals, and all that momentum is forward momentum. So it's a lot more efficient in that scenario on the climb. It's almost like riding a hardtail that can like take the chunder a little bit too. You just have that extra platform to pick your way through the super techie stuff. The free fall test. Drop bombs, drop bikes. In theory, the suspension should open once we hit free fall on this drop uh, because the accelerometer in the system can sense the free fall and that is located in the controller. You should see the green light go on when it opens midair. Okay, now we're dropping. Woo! 
free fall, drop zone. <laughs> uh, we dropped some food off in rural Africa while we were out there in the air. And the suspension also simultaneously opened while we hit free fall. Um, and that's what you want so that it uh, is soft when you land and not locked out. Here we have another free fall test. This is free fall test semi-urban edition so that you are, if you're free riding through campus, you know exactly how your uh, suspension is gonna react here. So we're basically a smooth transition into a free fall or jump and we should see the suspension open in the middle of the air um, so we have a soft landing. Send it! You ever take that thing off any sweet jumps? <laughs> we can power up this move, so this is the power up test. Power bars. Live valve is rad a lot of the time. It's mostly it's on when you need it and off when you don't. It's just adding more efficiency to the whole ride. You know, you can just get on the pedals and sprint and uh, go for it when it's locked out and then it opens up when you hit the chunder. And uh, you know, that's, that's the whole idea behind it is to basically take the human error out of the whole equation and uh, give you a good fast focused ride quality that's second nature you don't have to think about it i really notice it a lot in like technical low speed climbing um really kicking in in between the bumpy parts you just get an extra little bit of power and momentum out of your pedal stroke and same thing with like when you hit a smooth section on the descent just nice to to really like hammer on the pedals like race scenarios i think it's going to give people uh, you know, a pretty significant margin of advantage in certain situations. And this is the power down into a big hole test. <laughs> yeah, we flexed it. We shook it up a little bit and uh, yeah, we're giving her all the angles today. And for our next tricky magic, we're gonna do some uh, chunder mixed with a little flow, a couple of jumps, and uh, some like larger roller type terrain. And uh, try to get some pedals in there and see how the suspension reacts and adds support for the pedaling sections. So here we go. It's probably going to take a while for people to wrap their heads around, you know, letting the suspension do their do its thing. But uh, I think especially for those kind of riders that are not knob turners, they don't they don't like to make adjustments. They like to set it and forget it. This is going to make a big difference in their ride quality because it will activate the suspension when you need it and lock it out when it to make it more efficient. All right, this is the maybe manual Monday test. No Cody Kelly, but we'll give her a shot.
this test is a pass because I can't manual. <laughs> <laughs> if you did, what would have happened? Uh, we were hoping that we would trick the valve into thinking that we were climbing and it would lock out on us and uh, basically make us stuff it. But it do. seems like it's pretty tricky to trick a robot. So <laughs> good luck, humans. Hip test. Take one. We go into the moon. What does it do when you table tap? Uh, it says, you're not that cool. You should get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bender test, <laughs> kind of, baby bender. <laughs> We're gonna jump down, step down from here to down there. Cause it's, uh, this is why we have Devo kids here. So they build ghetto lines like this and then we come ride them. Baby Bender Huck, take one. The front wheel is pointed far too down to be a bender test. I just greased her right in there. Well, and I landed it, so <laughs> it's not a bender test. No seat bounce to explosion. <laughs> and I'm not that gnarly, so. <laughs> This is the curb stomp test. We're doing this one to emphasize how fast the valve opens and closes. So we're gonna go high speed into a curb and you can watch as the valve goes from locked out to open before you feel it in your handlebars. So this is the curb stomp, take one. Curb stomped. We curbed it. Curbed it? It was good. It's good. Yeah, we got the rim a little bit on the front, so that's what you want, you know. Get the tire activated and uh, and then have the suspension go from there. Obviously, you're not really going to be running full speed into curbs ever, but this is a good way to emphasize how fast the valve reacts in theory before you can feel it in the handlebars. So three milliseconds is the uh, estimated time. Does it, feel, does it feel like a normal bike or does it feel different? It feels like a normal bike. This is the hip hop test. Is that weird at all? Going off and out of a lockout? It's weird, well, it's, the weird thing is like not knowing exactly what to expect when you go to bunny hop preload. That's like the one thing that I've noticed that I've been able to trick the system with. You as a rider can predict what's going on with the trail more so than the computer can um, because it's sensing things as it happens, whereas you can read things that are further down the trail. If it's smooth going into a move like that, it may be locked out to preload and if it's rough going into a section like that, the suspension will be open, so it's a little bit hard to predict exactly how the bike is gonna feel in every situation. More often than not, the setting that I have been using the live valve in is the lightest of the thresholds. So I get thrown off, you know, occasionally, but most of the time the suspension's gonna be open when I go to preload for that feature. I think the, the best purpose for this technology at this point is going to be XC bikes and short travel trail bikes, you know, where people really want to get maximize the efficiency of their bike. And then as soon as you kind of tip the balance towards, you know, wanting a bike that's going to be 
really, really good for downhill, like park bikes, downhill bikes, heavy enduro trail bikes, like where you're riding really steep, rocky, gnarly terrain all the time. It's probably less advantageous because you're, you know, in that case, the live valve is going to be mostly open anyways. Does it, does it shock you if you put your tongue on? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs>